Tello, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Just a little warning screen. You know what I'm saying? Maybe need it, maybe not. Don't forget, we also got Patreon. We post five days a week. And twitch.com. So you can catch a live stream. You can catch any previous live. So you can be ready for the next one. This police interceptors. Got to see if we seen this one or not, man. Talk to me, though. Copyright, copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Y'all let me know if we've seen this already, man. Saturday night has just turned into Sunday morning. Okay. I said, just confirm, uh, let's tell you how to style that and give us the reg again. Interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom are out looking for a car which has been linked to a couple of thefts earlier in the evening. There's a, a Toyota Starlet, which is hit cameras in the local area. So hopefully we can drop on it and get them locked up. 17 year veteran Ben is a big fan of all 80s music. He knows that getting hold of villains is often like Kylie. Game of Thrones, we watching that right now on Patreon. Just started season two. H, appreciate the sub. How many months has this been? A lot. It's hit song, a case of I should be so lucky. Take your gamble, you buy a lot of ticket, you take your chance. So I do think you make your own luck in a way, but I also think if you're out there trying, it'll look favorable upon you. And Lady Luck does indeed seem to be smiling on our dynamic duo as they spot the starlet in a petrol station. Is that a Toyota starlet there? Is that Papa? Oh. But just as they pull in behind it, there oh, is. this is going to go. It's running. The driver spots them and speeds off from the petrol station. In what world? Do you think you're getting away from the police in this? Like, what do what 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 do y'all think was going through bro mind when he was like, "Yeah, I'm finna pull off, skirt, skirt, do the dash on him in a Toyota, whatever this is." Drugs gotta be going through his mind. <laughs> you getting you going to jail, buddy? Thanks, Romeo. Three, two. We enjoy what failed to stop in Keithley on Harding's Road. Hey, he turned the one meter one. Toyota is no match for Ben's 3 Series Beamer in terms of grunt, so the driver decides to use its size, squeezing in and out of traffic and then taking to the opposite lane. Yeah, speed is 5 at 0 miles an hour. It's a red Toyota Starlet. It's the weekend and the roads are busy, but that doesn't stop the driver taking the wrong side of the road once again before running a red light. Then he drives the wrong way up a one-way street. Turn left, left, left onto the high street. But Ben knows exactly where he's going and heads him off. The Toyota's not getting away that easily. I hate when they do that. Yes, yes, trained, authorised and super vehicle. You need to stop a thought. We're currently at South Street. Left, in towards left, Woodhouse. left, left. In towards Woodhouse Estate. Going to Woodhouse Estate. The car's heading towards a local estate. The driver could be looking to lose Ben in the main of streets decamp, decamp. before bailing out. Current speed 3-0 on Woodhouse Road. It's going to go to our Halifax right, Road. Right, right. But instead of driving into the estate, the Toyota takes off in the opposite direction and heads out of town. It's going to come out at Halifax Road, possibly. Five zero miles an hour. 
The driver then takes to a cobbled country lane. Yes, yes, yes. Just turn to left, left, left. Onto Haynes with... The fact that y'all got them streets out there is crazy. I think those streets are in Miami, too. I can't... Cut them cobblestone streets? I believe so. I think they had them in Chicago, too, but, like, only in certain, like, areas for, like, decoration. I don't know. Lane goes over the top towards Cullingworth. Current speed is 30 miles an hour, 3 zero. The car then dives down a dirt track. It's going to go down towards the dead end. It's going to be a deep camp. Back towards Woodhouse, left, please. Left, 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 down towards um, Woodhouse. Bottle deep camp. The clouds of dust mean Ben can hardly see, and the bumpy track is giving his car a proper battering. This pursuit is getting out of control. Yeah. It's Ben Pearson and Matt Rad evening. Uh, we don't need a recap. We don't want no street. recaps. Yes, yes. Driving down a dirt, dirt track. It's going to go down towards the dead end. It's going to be a deep camp. Ramping up the risk level to the max. They're going to get out and go down towards Woodhouse Estate. Yeah, can't give me a deep camp. It's going to go down to Woodhouse Estate. It's going down the um, old name road. We're unable to follow down there, mate. It's just Garo or Grand out just there. Yeah, we can't follow, unfortunately. It's gone he down got there, away? A dirt track. The pursuit's over. The rough terrain would wreck the police car. And it'll be difficult to catch the runners in the dark. Ben knows the area well and suspects they'll have ditched it up ahead. Right, mate. Do you want to get out yeah. with a torch? Basically, that goes on for about 500 metres. Right. But I can't get the car down. Yeah, fine. Right, I'll go so around the other way. Oh, right. okay. Matt disappears into the darkness while Ben uses... I ain't gonna lie, Matt, you awfully brave. I keep forgetting it's the UK, man. Ain't no wildlife out there like that. But it couldn't be me. I don't care if it's wildlife or not. Couldn't be me. It's his local knowledge and heads round to see if he can spot the runners. Where we've just pursued them, you won't know that exists unless you live in this local area. So that vehicle's probably either going to be abandoned or... Well, to be honest, it will be abandoned because I don't think you can get a car down there now. It's that bad. This is where it comes out here. Matt's with the motor. It has been ditched, and whoever was in it is long gone, along with the keys. Ben parks up and makes his way up the track. Can it be driven out, or what's your thoughts? Yeah, there's no keys with it. It can't be driven out. You're right. Ben's been joined by local officer Sam. Uh, a quick little car. Yeah, well, they are. Old style. That's brilliant. So you don't realise how bad this is until you're trying to drive down it. Now they need to get the Toyota moved. And with no keys, it's not going to be easy. See, the thing is, you're not going to get recovery down here, so we've got yeah. two options. We have to put the steering lock and brake it and then roll it down. The recovery will have to come in the morning. Where we are now, there's, um, there's known criminals that live down the road in the bottom part of the area down there. If we leave the vehicle set where it is, they're going to come back for it. Wait, where is this? Well, this look like California. They like up on a hill, looking down into like the neighborhood. Um, and obviously, it's going to be used in crime again. Kind of we haven't got it back, which is a good job all in all. But hopefully, forensics oh. might get something on the car and we'll go from there and try to find an offender. Matt flexes his biceps and tries to break the steering lock, but notices a phone ringing in the footwell, probably left by one of the runners. Someone's phone. What an idiot. Who? Bro, what are you doing? Hello. How are you doing? They ain't got a phone call? Aaron's phone. They said his name? Aaron, what? Aaron who? Your nephew. And his What's last name? Aaron's. Aaron Aaron's. Um, just by Woodhouse Road. Come and get friends to meet you, and I'll uh, give it you back. The caller isn't keen to retrieve the phone, but he has given him some important intel. Just had a nice phone call to tell us that the phone in the car is um, Aaron. So, we some inquiries on that name. He gave him his first and last name, bro. If it, <laughs> bro, if somebody called me and I don't pick up my phone, don't do that. If somebody else pick it up, it's done. And um, we try to identify who he is, where he is. 
and also his friends who are in cars well. But the first priority is to get the car shifted. And they'll need to break the steering lock, which is designed not to be easily budged. Squash player Matt is close to celebrating a decade on the force. Well, Before that, person. he was a personal trainer. Ah, okay. Favorite TV show, Happy Valley. Giving him a good workout. Come on, do it yourself. It's yeah, I'm almost done with that too. You'll do it. Keep going. On right. Patreon. Keep going. But Ben has a solution. It's not going off, is it? <laughs> Get out of the car and just pull the top towards you. Pull the top of the steering wheel towards you, but outside of the car, so you can use your body weight. Ain't go off, is it? <laughs> What it's I'll do physics. is I'll see if I can get Steve here with X5. He can pull it out. As manpower can't shift the steering wheel, he's hoping the horsepower of the police 4x4 will do the job. But first, they try a more basic tool. What's that? A broom? Some sort of... Well, yeah. It's going to break. <laughs> How many traffic cops does it take to get a Toyota Solo <laughs> Joking aside, they can't leave the car here in case the runners come back for it. You haven't got a crowbar or something? If you tie it around this side, it's forcing it around. It's time for the X5. See what happens. I know what's likely to happen. I think it'd be pretty, I would suggest. Go on, go on. There you go, stop. There you go, done. Ben's brainwave has done the job. The hard to shift motor is finally moving. <laughs> The whole steering wheel moved, didn't it? Right, go on, get going. See, all they needed were a bit of thought. They've got all that muscle, but they don't have all there, do they? Whatever works, right? The Toyota's finally out of the woods and onto the back of the Is it driving or rolling? The steering's quite heavy. They may not have caught the people in it, but getting this old banger out of circulation is a good result for the team. If we didn't get that vehicle recovered tonight, it'll just be used in crime again. If they can't get it out from where it was up there, they've just set it on fire. It'd become a danger to members of the public, so the best thing we've done is get it recovered and uh, we'll do some investigation and try and trace the drive. Despite examining the car and the phone in the footwell, they were unable to discover who was driving. No one was arrested yeah, no in relation record to in the driving name. and theft offences. The car was later destroyed. <laughs> The days of nicking a car by breaking into it and hot wiring it are long gone. The most common way vehicles are stolen now is by Signals. Hanoi burglaries. Named after the first operation set up to target these burglars more than 15 years ago. Hanoi burglaries were people break into houses specifically to take the keys and take cars off driveways. It's big business at the moment. If they like them and they're fast cars and they think they might give us a run for our money in our cars, They'll keep them, put them on false plates, and use them to commit further burglaries. So they can try and use them as a That's a risky. Cars. That's risky. They will sell them as they come, or they will, again, sell them on, but for parts. Burglary and car theft? All in one? Little left. Cheers. What car is it? Ford Fiesta. What color is it? Silver, I mean, just a kiss. It's pub kicking out time, and interceptors Chris Spencer and Kev Shaw are on the hunt for a car stolen in a Hanoi burglary, which has hit several number plate Hanoi. recognition cameras. Hanoi it's burglary. It's been seen like the other side of Bradford, and we've been—I we, thought it's going away from us, but it's now it's, it seems it's turned around. It's going back towards us now. So we're going to try head it off at the pass down here. It's not too far away, really. The police pair, Kevin Spenner, joined the force on the same day almost 16 years ago. Before then, Motorbike and Rochdale FC loving Kev worked as the manager of a well-known supermarket. Whereas his partner, Chris, aka Spenner, who's a big fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Sienna Miller, worked in Never road construction. And it's the road the stolen Fiesta might be on that's frustrating them tonight. Not that well. No Fiesta up there. Should we say he's gone there 65? He's going to go back to Bradford. They know where and when the stolen car's been seen. But despite that, the 
radio's gone quiet and the Fiesta seems to have vanished. There's only so much racing around you can do. We can drive really fast everywhere, but you're always, you're always playing catch up. And when you drive past two or three junctions, it's exponential the amount of the ways it could be gone. But then the stolen car pings another camera, a fair few miles away and just outside West Yorkshire. Just getting off the option cameras. I'd have to be into winning early. I'm telling you, bro, that AMPR is crazy. Well, that, that's like a digital satcom. You know, every step. I won't worry, though. We're playing catch up again now. We're going to go visit North Yorkshire. The sale those guys are doing. West Yorkshire shares a border with five different police forces. It's common practice to work together to nick villains. As Spedder and Kev approach the border, a North Yorkshire Excuse car me. has caught up with the elusive Fiesta. How far past Hubie are you? Yep, we're coming up to the behind now. Oh, we're into Hubie now. Spenner and Kev are close to their colleague and soon join him behind the stolen Fiesta. 5 0 to car 2. Yeah, are you in any position to attempt to stop it? Careful, do a T-pet. How many units are there behind us? 5 0, we're behind you. Have we got a third vehicle close by? Uh, my intention is once we've got three vehicles together, yeah, we've got a three car box on this vehicle uh, when the opportunity arises. Just the AMPR is they plan That's to crazy. stop the stolen car with a tactical pursuit and containment, or TPAC, where three police vehicles box in a car. So they'll have to wait for a third unit to catch up. This is why we kind of got to use some of the tactics that we get taught, just to minimise risk. I kind of want to just pull out and take his nose off, but I think I'll be told off for doing that. Thankfully, Spenner doesn't have to take any drastic action. The third car soon catches up. Two one North Yorkshire Frontier, they have authorised him to stop. Okay, thank you. Preventive two one, then have we got all three vehicles together? Yeah, preemptive box, you go first, Steph. I'll go on to offside rear carrot back. It's time to T pack. Looking clear now. Now let's go, go, go. Okay, it was probably a shaky tea pack. They're probably one of the most shaky tea packs I've ever seen, boss. Didn't look like they knew how to execute this. Turn your engine off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Oh, out the car. I'll break on now. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> he said, yeah. Was he actually he running? No. Whose car is it? Easy question, whose car is it? Stop, stop, no injuries, no damage. It's been a textbook T-Pack. Yeah, the stolen motor's been stopped and they have the driver. Jump in. And the passenger. Whose car is it? Put your window up. Whose car is it? What's your name? Whose yeah. car is it? You've just been what? The driver, Tarragon. All right. Yeah. And you're banned as well? Yeah, shown as an outstanding stolen. Right. You're under arrest. Well, I'm getting done first. For stealing. Well, you've been arrested. You've been arrested for stealing, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, I'll show you the stolen. That sounds like some of, someone who's stolen it, sir. West and North Yorkshire have combined forces and got the job done. So, stolen car and false plates. It's, that, 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 that's a great result. It's been stolen for a couple of months. No others pleading. So somebody walked up to you and gave you a hundred pounds to drive a car from wherever it was to 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 wherever they said, and you gonna do it? That's that's stupid. That's dumb. Use your brain. Think about it first. Like that's not it. <laughs> that's not the smartest move. In ignorance, but. It's not the first time I've heard that. Taking it down to the police station now, and we'll see, we'll see what he's got to say. He ain't the brains of Britain, the lad. But when he says, oh, I haven't stolen it, mate. That's what a car thief would probably say. It's, it's a car thief's prerogative to lie. So 
we'll see. The truth will come out. The car is believed to have been stolen via a Hanoi burglary. Kev checks the details. Yeah, can you just confirm? Is it just uh, is it theft of motor vehicle or is it burglary? No, it's uh, showing as a burglary residential, so a Hanoi. Right, you're under arrest on suspicion of burglary yeah, as well. And the contents of the car won't help his defence. See what I'm saying? Bear in mind, these lads are innocent. Theft just and burglary. Done, paid 100 just... quid to take it somewhere, obviously. I know whenever I go out in a stolen car, you always make sure you and take character. your burglary stuff with you. Everyone needs like your burgling hat with its goggles on. It's all on there with gloves. <laughs> so these guys are up to no good. It's, it's, it's a bit chilly to have it in, it in balaclava and gloves weather, is it? Back at the Nick, Kev books in the driver. It's been a satisfying evening's work. The gentleman we've had, he's been arrested for burglary. Um, this vehicle's been taken from a burglary where people break into your house, nick your keys, and then make off with your car. So the car were on false place trying to avoid detection and we've found it and stopped it and got him. He's also shown as a disqualified driver until he's passed his driving test. Yeah. He's never bothered taking a driving test so he's been further arrested for disqualified driving. We joined this job to basically get stolen cars back and tonight we've, we've done it. Another childhood dream ticked off the list. The driver couldn't be connected to the burglary so the charges were dropped. However, he was charged with theft of a motor vehicle, disqualified driving and no insurance. He awaits his day in court. No further action was taken against the passenger. Well, and Kev's delight. You got off light, honestly. I ain't even gonna lie. With, with them charges, you could have you got off for the theft of the car, but get them off the road. Still to come, train and man. Insured vehicle C The number of uninsured vehicles seized by the cops is on the rise. Last year, over 140,000 of them were taken off the roads. The interceptors have a theory why people drive uninsured. Not insurance is a big thing, definitely, but it's a bit of a, a kind of catch-22, isn't it? A lot of people can't afford the insurance, so they take the risk. If they get caught, the car gets taken off them and they'll risk a fine or a point. How much is insurance there? How much? Okay, somebody in the comments tell me, how much is full coverage... And then how much is um, liability? Or do, can you even get liability in the UK? I don't know how insurance works there. Full coverage is where you get, if you get in, if you hit somebody, they're covered and you're covered. Liability is if you hit somebody, they're covered, not you. But that puts the premiums up in certain areas, which then puts it out of reach for even your average person might be twice as much the car's even worth and and people just can't afford that so they, they just take the risk more and more a new day is dawning and as the early birds start to go about their business interceptor dan robson and rookie emily walker are coming to the end of their night shift and are taking a trip round emily's home turf East Leeds never sleeps. Leeds? Not sure I've heard. Dan may not. Party City. I'm telling you, I heard Leeds. I'll be watching the, the night walks. We should watch one. I ain't watch one in a minute. Be an expert on East Leeds, but in his more than 15 years on the job, he's developed an eagle eye for touchy <laughs> drive. Celebrity crush Jessica Alba. Yes. And as they cruise through the residential streets of Hare Hills, he clocks a car making a swift right turn. Oh, Nino. That gets his wrong and radar twitching. And in the less than 15 seconds he takes to catch up, the driver's already out of the car. Hey, old fella. Fella. Is it your, is it your car? This one. Yeah, this one. No, my. Right. Where's the keys? The key. Yeah. No key. I just watched you get out of the driver's seat. You for the run? Don't walk off, fella. Sorry. 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 No, no, no. I, I give you key. I give you key. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, boss. Sorry. Get your hands behind oh, your back. Oh, sorry. sorry. What are you doing? Right. Oh. Get in the car. Get in the car. Oh, I give you key. Give me the key now. Yes, the key. Lee. Where's the key? He dropped it on the floor. The driver's trying to hide something. Dan's got a hunch what it might be. Wait, what was her name? 
Have you got your licence with you? No. You've got no licence, right. <clears throat> Why try and run? Hey, man, she giving Lisa and um, the other lady cop some, some, you know what I'm saying? She giving them some go, ain't she? <laughs> Why run? I don't know this stuff. Emily's also had a Emily. run of the car and driver's details through the police national computer. There's no insurance. Right, there's no trace of him on any system. Have you got any ID at all? Yes, I have the phone. Anything in the car? No. Sorry, darling. I'm not you. Darling is crazy. You darling. Right, so he hasn't got any ID. You can't blame him for trying, Emily. Relax. So I'm just going to drive the car and follow um, Dan round to his home address to get his ID. The man lives just a few streets away. And once he's cuffed... Um, that's a problem, believe me. Well, you've well, tried to run away. Well. You've tried to run away already, so... He goes in and gets his passport. Two minutes. Yeah, but you have to take this one home, please. All right, hang on. Just wait here, she'll get it. Yeah, I'm waiting here, yeah? Y'all finna, so y'all finna, what y'all finna let him uncuff him? What if he run out the back? The Dawn driver's recently arrived in the UK from Romania, and his reticence in getting a driving license has... Yeah, they might kick you out for this. Do y'all be kicked, do they do that out there? ...caused him big problems. Yeah, strange one, really. We're just um, knocking about around the Hare Hills area of Leeds and we see this car and... Looks like it's done a bit of a, a lucky left type manoeuvre. Doesn't want to speak to us. And as we've come round the corner, he's um, he's just getting out of the car and walking away from it. He obviously didn't want to speak to us. Um, and then he started to try and run. I don't like people that try and make me run. Um, and the reason being, it turns out he's got no licence for insurance. So I'm just going to do the paperwork now to report him and take the car off him. So... Uh, It'll take about five or ten minutes, but he'll have to walk to work, I'm afraid. Oh, they letting them off early. Like, they letting them off pretty light then. Five, ten minutes, then you, you go to walk to work. You for driving without license or insurance. Okay, we're taking the car. You're taking the car? Yeah. Now? Yeah. You can get the car back, but we're taking it now because you can't drive without a license or insurance. This is a big problem. It is a big problem. Yeah. For you? But it'd be an even bigger problem if you had a crash without a license or insurance. Or, worse than that, if you had a crash and someone died, you'd be going to prison. And then it'd be a big problem, wouldn't it? Is that your wife in there or girlfriend? Yes. Who's going to put food on the table? It's serious. Okay. Only one time. Yes. Who's going to put food on the table? And then it'd be a big problem, wouldn't it? Look how she's looking at him while he's giving the speech. Look how she looking at me while I'm reacting to the to the video. You good? You trying to go get a little, you know what I'm saying? A little Greg's, a little sausage roll out of this? The tea? You tell me, because I'm with whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's whatever to me. Is that your wife in there or girlfriend? Yes. Who's going to put food on the table? It's serious. Only one time. It only takes one time though, doesn't it? You could drive to the end of the street and someone that's had too much to drink, someone drunk could walk out in front of you. You need to have a licence and you need to have insurance. By law. And you haven't got either. So that's why you're sat here now. All right. Once he's got his things out of the car, Happy you've got everything, yeah. The not so happy ex driver walks to work. Poor lad. Still Come went to work. Life, provide for his family. Yeah, fair play, boy. Away his car. Do it legally. The man was later charged with driving with no license or insurance and fined £1,053 and given eight points to be put on his license once he gets one. His car wasn't recovered from the pound, so was destroyed. Damn. Dan's still not happy about his early morning exercise. Trying to run for something as simple as no docks. 
why bother? You know, you know you're not going to get locked up for it. So a lot of people just hold their hands up and. In Chicago, you see how he ran a little bit, tried to discard like he would have been in jail. <laughs> like you're going for even trying to run. I know you're apologetic and Take all that, but you mom. gotta go, buddy. He didn't want to, did he? <laughs> but Emily's got a far more serious problem. I broke a nail. Broke a nail? It's cool, you want me to, what you? Yeah, it happens quite regular, to be honest. You can't have nice nails in this job. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was all right. Just about. It's Saturday night. Oh. I was all right. Just about. It's Saturday night, and interceptors Wayne Hutchison and Carl Charlie Farley are on the lookout for a car allegedly involved in a hit and run. You know what I'm saying? You gotta put your. You know what I'm saying? You gotta put your stamp on stuff. Someone just shouted up that there's been a couple of mopeds um, and a carser. Uh, carser deliberately smashed yeah, into her. Uh, and then made off. They've got an idea where the car's heading, but the roads are empty. This car could be anywhere, couldn't it, up here? Yeah. Then they get an update. Yeah, that motorbike's just gone past me, um, Middleton, uh, Ring Road. God, it's miles away, it's right down, to, right down there, isn't it? Fiesta insurance for an 18-year-old is 1,162 pounds. 50 year old, it's 517 pounds. Oh, this is per year? So hold on, let me see. Calculator. Ninety-six. Do you have to pay it all up front for the year or can you pay it monthly? Ninety-six dollars a month is nothing. Do you know how much it costs out here? <laughs> like this that's light. The car's been spotted by but I can under I understand if you got to pay it all up front. People probably don't, you know what I'm saying. Way across the county. Installments? Huddersfield Town and Peter K. Van Wayne worked in banking before he became a cop 19 years ago. His partner, Carl, is also a big fan of the Lancastrian comic and was an electrician before joining the force. I'm not saying don't get insurance because you obviously need it, but nine times, I feel like insurance is slightly a scam because most people don't even, never really use their insurance. They just have it. So they're just collecting money from you, collecting money from you, collecting money from you without doing anything. And then when you do finally file a claim or something, they damn near don't want to pay it out. They don't want to pay. They don't want to give you the money. You got to fight with them tooth and nail. Like, come on, man. But they both know the roads like the backs of their hands. So they hit the motorway as it's the quickest route to the Corsa. Advanced driver Wayne's hitting almost 100 in the outside lane. But then, a van in the middle lane starts drifting into his path, nearly forcing him into the central reservation. Without Wayne's swift reactions and driving skills, this could have been a fatal collision. At 102. He's texting. He's texting. Even though they're on their way to another job, they can't ignore the driver's actions and suspect he may have been distracted. We've just passed a, a van and it started to come onto our lane. So Wayne's had to swerve to avoid a collision. And as we've passed him, I've looked and he's, he's texting on his phone, messing about with his phone. He was still texting even after? You see me coming down here? Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Wayne bangs on the sirens and this time the van driver does notice the police car and pulls over. Foxy rentals. Having narrowly avoided a serious smash, Carl's not in the best of moods. This fella's gonna get a right earful. Come this side. Come this side. Thank you, Sorry, mate. It's not a good place to be. Just come and take a seat with us two minutes. 
And he seems unfazed by the situation. He's happy. He drunk. Just jump in. Just need a quick Thank word you. with you. Thank you. You're out of it, mate. I'm sorry, it's just the... Uh, I'm just trying to get different. used to the bloody controls. It's an I've had, I've only had it. Right. It won't work out. The right. So what, to... messing about with your phone or something? No, I wasn't messing about with my phone. You had it held up in front of you as we passed you. Not my phone, I didn't. Wayne's heard enough. Right, whether I do you that, whether, whether I prosecute you for your mobile phone or do you care, because I'll tell you what, listen to what I'm saying to you. I will do the talking, you will do the listening now. Yeah. I'm responding to an incident. I'm in lane three of the motorway and I'm overtaking you. You've come and drifted straight onto my carriage where you've actually nearly put me into concrete barrier. Yeah. Sorry. We've nearly had. Just bear with me. For 31 years, I'm not. I'm not um, some shitter or anything. I'm not saying that you are, but what I'm saying is you've nearly put me into the barrier. It was a genuine mistake. The driver's straight up denying he was on his phone, but Carl's not convinced. Where is your mobile phone? My mobile phone's in the car. In the van. Whereabouts in the van? It's on the on the in the on the, the seat on the chair. Carl finds a phone on the front seat. Things aren't looking good for the driver. On the seat next to it. Seat what? It was on the seat. It wasn't on charge. It was just on the seat. Yeah, but it is on charge. It wasn't. It wasn't plugged in. No, I've not is. just unplugged that. Even though the phone was on the seat next to him, the man's insistent he wasn't using it. Well, I wasn't on the phone when you... Passed. You had something in your hand. Hopefully you've got it recorded. Got it recorded where you nearly put us into know, central I reservation. It, it Stick a duplicate ticket on. Gone for the Carl has a scan of the phone, but can't find any proof that the man was using it. So they're going to give him a ticket for driving without due care and attention. Hey, hey I'd fight... Mm, can he beat that? Pop, it's on camera. Not really. I don't think you can beat that. Be mindful if we're using the controls of the vehicle or whatever we're using while we're driving, we need to be concentrating on what we're doing, yeah? yeah. I've got to apologise, it was momentary thing. But that moment relapse of concentration could have killed me, could have killed you, my colleague or somebody else that's travelling behind us, OK? We've been messing with Summer. Um, he's adamant it wasn't his phone. But he had something in his hand, he was messing with Summer. And were it not for Wayne's skillful driving, the outcome could have been far worse. Wayne's had to swerve towards the concrete central reservation to avoid a collision with this. And it is a prime example. I want to say it did take like, some reaction time, but like skillful driving is like a, a stretch, ain't it? You just gently swerve and don't overreact. You need to be concentrating 110% on your driving when you're not motorway. That could have been nasty, that could have been naughty. If it'd have hit us, if it'd have come over anymore, and hit us, right. Wayne wouldn't have had anywhere Ooh, to go. Have been that like, that's what I'm saying, like, chill. The van driver accepted to take a driver retraining course instead of going to court for driving without due care and attention. When I got him out, he were all smiles and got him. I'm, I'm thinking, what are you smiling at? He just nearly wiped us out. But yeah, it just shows the dangers, just that little lapse, that second lapse of concentration ends up like that. Can I have a moving one, please, at Bradford Road at uh, Brigalpa, please. <coughs> it's just before sunrise, and interceptor Tony Rouse is behind a suspicious motor with four people on board. Registered, please. She is the only British driver. The car's registered to a woman who's the only person insured to drive it, and that's where the problem is. So, I've got a funny a, feeling a bloke. that won't drive it, will it? We'll just pull it over and uh, oh, we'll light it up and see if it pulls over. This driver is clearly paying attention and pulls over. But as the car comes to a stop, two you people don't. in the front appear to be changing places. The passenger's moving over to the driver's seat. Hello. Hello. <laughs> no good, can't be on, no good swapping one. seats. <laughs> <laughs> they were still swapping seats as they walked up. No, because you were driving. Not even there. moving fast. I'll be driving. No, you won't. I'll go. No, you won't. Not unless you've grown a beard. The front seat twosome are sticking to their story that she was driving. Can we get out? Just uh, stay there a minute. Tony needs to ask some more questions, but with four people to deal with, he calls back up. 
drivers have swapped seats. Um, comes back to uh, a female and male were driving. Uh, just go in a bit of a lift. There's only me here. This foreign car. And reinforcements soon arrive in the form of Nick Priestley and Claire Gray. Hey, up. Since you're to female, um, there's only a female on it. I don't know who she is yet. I haven't got that far. Uh, okay. um, but like I say, he were driving. I like to take a seat with us. Nick takes the man off for a chat. He's still saying that he wasn't driving. Meanwhile, Claire's having a talk with the woman, who tells her a different tale. She says she were giving you a lesson. That's why you were driving it. Yeah. 20 past yeah, I'm, five. I'm not even on the same page with your lie. <sighs> Which, that could have been cool, like giving it a lesson. That'd be all right. If it's a strange time to be giving a driving lesson, and there aren't any L plates on the Golf. But oh, whatever was plates? happening, the car's not going to be driven any further. I'll tell you what we'll do, then we'll seize it. Right. We'll seize it. She knows it ain't got any insurance. Right. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got keys at minute, so... Right. Yeah. Coolio. So, the car's going to the pound, and the four people in it will have to find another way of getting home. That Nick's sucks. got a fun job of delivering the news. Unfortunately, my love, your car's getting seized this evening. All right, I'll tell you why. I'll, ex I'll explain to you why. All right, the guy that's driving doesn't have any licence or insurance. You've allowed him to drive. Okie dokie. So, well there's, well, there's no issue. We can get it back. All right, but tonight it's getting seized. All right, because he doesn't have any insurance and he's been driving it. These guys at back have only got 100 yards to walk. There's a nice warm taxi rank over there. And you can join them if you want. Right, so if you want to step out and then uh, we'll get you some paperwork and you can get on your way. Despite Nick's suggestion, the backseat passengers seem keen on hanging around. I thought you were going to the taxi rank. He's probably recording you because you're acting like bloody idiots. Yep. Go that way, <laughs> taxi rank. What's happening with that friend then? What friend? That friend. Yeah. In the car? Go He's going soon. I have to go home. Yeah, that's all right. He's going soon. Come on, come and talk to my mate over here and he'll explain everything. I'm not going to the cellar, man. No. Jump in here. <laughs> Tony's work is good enough for me, so... The faces they were driving, they were driving, the car's getting... See, that's my whole thing. Why y'all playing so much with the police? Go on ahead, go somewhere. He's, he's been reported, and uh, everyone lost. Left apart from these two here. It's been an eventful end to Tony's night shift. See you later. Take care, let's yeah, get on. Take care. Well, we've seen this car drive past. It's, uh, it's five o'clock in the morning, it, it, there's four people in it, which straight away sort of arouses your suspicion. The female, um, although she was uh, at the backside in the driver's seat, uh, I think her legs and everything else were still in the passenger seat, so they were, they were in the process of swapping seats, basically. Um, so it was quite obvious to me. I've seen him driving, I might have quite happy that he was driving and that she's come up with some story because he's not insured and done it. They can fight them. They can fight it. A driving, uh, a driving license. It's fightable. The man was later reported for driving with no insurance. No action was taken against the woman in the car or the two backseat passengers. Coming up. That's the st oh, okay. Turn the engine off. Over 70,000 people are caught drink driving. Ah! And as the officers that have to deal with the after. Y'all know how I feel about drunk drivers, man. Don't even waste your time. The math, most Call interceptors have zero tolerance of the offenders. Drink drivers really have absolutely no respect for the law. They drive on the road and put everybody else at danger. And it is a complete disregard for the law and disregard for anybody else's safety uh, as well as their own. Uh, and there's absolutely no excuse for it in my eyes. They are incredibly selfish and they will just do that without thought of anybody else. We see vehicle still there, take it. We see. It's Monday night and interceptor Bob Hoyle and rookie Danny Mickey are on their way to a crash, allegedly involving a drunk driver. We're just going to report the van that's crashing into some bollards in Elland. Uh, drivers potentially uh, been drinking. Veteran interceptor Bob's not far off celebrating a quarter century on the job. 
When he's not out on patrol, he likes nothing better than heading down to Valley Parade to watch the mighty Bradford City. We're on this it now. Well, lads here. Oh, there, look. Just finish that. <laughs> he and Danny arrived to find some busted bollards and a smashed up van, but no tow his car up. Driver. Thankfully, there are some witnesses. Up that way. What? You always got the old lady out the window, man. You gotta be wary of them. Okay. Yeah, he's got red t shirt, grey beard, and black turban. God damn! She know all. <laughs> She know the whole fit, beard and everything. He's fairly old, he's trapped, he's staggering everywhere, he can hardly right. stand up. Right. How long ago going up that way? Uh, about 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes, he's got a lantern in his hand and a red t-shirt. Right, okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, he's got a red t-shirt. So, the driver's done a runner, or, according to the witness, a stagger. 10 minutes ago, Danny and Bob need to track him down. 10 minutes. Especially drunk. And a couple of minutes later, <laughs> they catch up with a man fitting the description. Just want to make sure you're okay. Because I believe you've been involved in an accident with your van. Is that right? I'm not quite. You're not quite sure. What have you got in your hands here? Can I just check? Is that the van key there? Yeah. We'll just uh, take all that. What's this? Like, oh, like a lot. Right. Are you, are you okay? Are you injured yourself? No, I'm not. Okay. Do you want to come and have a seat two minutes around here for me? Just come around okay. here. Have you had something to drink tonight, alcohol wise? Just around this side. Just come around here. Yeah, he's faded, faded, faded. Oh. How much have you had to drink, sir? Just you have a little seat in there, my friend. Thank you. Drunk as hell, I mean. The man's fairly incoherent and reeks of booze. How much have you had to what drink is tonight? His nose sir? is sweating. Not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. Cat. Do you want to tell me what's happened or where are you going now? I'm going home. You're going home. Is it your van? Now tonight you're going to jail. Obviously, I, I can smell some alcohol in your breath. Okay. Um, so I'm going to request a breath test from you, a roadside breath test. Have you given one of these before? Yep. I have. Okay. But he won't be doing one here. This were working earlier on, won't it? Right. The breath test kit's on the blink. Given the man's behaviour and odour, Bob's got enough grounds to nick him on suspicion of drink driving. No kizzy. I can, I can obviously smell the alcohol it's quite strong and you, you look a little bit unfit the way you're kind of walking and from the witnesses you seem to be staggering uh we ain't got a breath kit uh which is working so at this moment in time i'm going to tell you that you're under arrest for being unfit to drive whilst under the influence of drink okay <laughs> you look okay, calm. So, um, we've found the gentleman as described by uh, people back down there but as you can see it's clearly in drink um his breath kit won't work in, so he's been arrested on suspicion of being unfit through drink. We'll take him to the police station where he can blow the machine and we'll find out how much alcohol's in his body. Returning to the scene of the crash, it's clear that the driver was lucky not to have added to the more than 9,000 people killed or injured on the UK's roads each year due to drink driving. He has actually hit this. Nobody drink and, drink and drive. He's still sturdy enough, but you know what I'm saying. Just you know, sorry, but that's that's what stopped him. Or else he'd have probably carried on going over the over the bollards, wouldn't he? Uh, they're only here to highlight the fact that maybe he should get slow vehicles down. I think drink driving is you know a bit of a bugbear of mine. And this gentleman, mean, he's, he's really drunk, and you know, staggering about. And like you say, I don't know where he's going, where he's been, but he's from Huddersfield, which is a good uh, nine, ten mile away. You know, he's lucky he has it. This come to a stop and not like say hit somebody else or you know kill somebody back at the nick the man gets on the intoxilizer blah 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 bit more, bit more, bit more. that's it well done stop and gives the result bob expected okay so you've blown 81 well it's Ooh. over twice Three times, the tip. almost okay 
The man was later convicted of drink driving. He was banned for 18 months and fined £525, including costs. Bob's nicked hundreds Sorry. of drink drivers no over the years and still can't understand why people do it. These people take the, the, the risks of drinking and driving and, well, it beggars belief, but, you know, they get involved in these collisions, don't they? And, well, I've not safe for that, really. I just don't know. They're, uh, yeah, mad. Shots fired! Oh. Crime never... That's it. See you later, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.